Psalm 136. It's a very unique psalm. And I uh, just want to read a couple verses here. The Bible says in verse 1, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto God, unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We're thankful that, Lord, you'll never run out of mercy. We're thankful, Lord, for your excellent greatness, your loving kindness, Lord, your graciousness. Lord, we're thankful to be called one of yours. Now, Lord, I'm looking forward to being by the crystal sea one day. But, Lord, I'm looking forward to what you're going to do in our midst tonight. Lord, I do pray for Miss Nancy. You touch her in her affliction and help her. Others are sick. I pray for them. You would touch them and strengthen them. Some are providentially hindered. Help them and touch them. God bless those that are working with our children on the other side. I pray that, Lord, any of those children that have not been saved would be saved, uh, Lord, as a result of the faithfulness of those who are studying and preparing and are teaching them what the Bible says. Lord, I saw tonight where they're going to be teaching on sanctification. What a tremendous truth to teach to children, and Lord, that they might learn to live as unto Christ. God, I pray for those that are working with our teens. You'd bless their efforts. And God, we certainly pray that you'd help us here in the sanctuary tonight, sit down amongst us. Lord, strengthen our inner man. God, prepare us for what lies ahead, and help us, Lord, to be truly doers of the Word of God God will thank you for it, for it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to verse number 1. It says, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. I want you to notice as a way of introduction, first of all, the presentation. He says, O give. He didn't say, hold back. He didn't say, keep. He said, give. And can I say, the Bible says that God loveth a cheerful giver. And if there's one thing as believers that we need to learn, practice, be found guilty of, is we ought to be found guilty of giving thanks unto God. Now, I gave you all an opportunity a minute ago, but uh, only one chose to take advantage of giving thanks unto God. If it wasn't for the hand of God, uh, they might be preparing for a funeral today. But yet God, His mercy endured forever, and thanks be unto God, uh, she gave thanks to God. Can I say, uh, being thankful... And presenting your thankfulness are two different things. If we took a poll, everyone would be thankful that we live in America. Everyone would be thankful that we've got a good church. Everyone would be thankful we had the Bible. Everyone would be thankful we've been saved by the good grace of God. It's one thing to be thankful. It's another thing to present your thankfulness. Uh, we see the presentation. Notice, if you will, the product. What is the product that we're to present? Thanks. Now, can I help you with something? He didn't say give a declaration or give an oration. He didn't say stand up and be able to expound the Scriptures and present to God's people a thought from the Word of God. He didn't ask you to do that. Matter of fact, I told Miss Annette this, told my Sunday school classes today, told Miss Annette, uh, uh, I was uh, 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 just kind of vexed. Uh, people uh, 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 will come up with some of the most lame excuses for not to come to church. And on a week-in, week basis, preachers go nuts. We really do. Now, I know you think I'm Superman, but I'm made out of the same stuff you're made out of. Hmm? And... Literally, Brother Bob, I know the church you used to attend, the pastor put this into practice, made y'all do this. I told her, I said, I think I'm going to ask every man to study a lesson 
and get up and teach it. Everyone. So you could see how hard it is to study, how hard it is to prepare, how difficult it is to have that knot in your stomach because you're nervous, you're going to have to stand up and look in front of God's people and present this thing and you're not real confident in doing that. Uh, and also the lump you get in your throat uh, uh, knowing that if you mess up, somebody could die and go to hell. And then get up to do it to only hear some of the lame excuses why people don't care that you studied for hours and that you went through all of that to be able to give them something from heaven and they could care less about it. But you see, I'm an equal, equal opportunity offender. I also told her I was going to have all the ladies study a lesson and have to present it at ladies' meetings to other ladies. You know what Miss Netta said? She said, what are you trying to do? Run people off the church? Because you're going to lose half the crowd. Hmm? Huh? But it's amazing. God didn't ask you to present a message. He asked you to present thanks. You may not be able, you really may not physically be able to stand behind a pulpit and give a message. There are a lot of people that will take zeros in classes before they have to get up and give a speech in a speech class. They're just not going to do it uh, uh, because they have a fear or a phobia of that. Uh, you may not be able to uh, uh, present uh, uh, a message, but everybody can present thankfulness to God. He doesn't require something harsh from thee. He said his yoke is easy, his burden is light. And by the way, Brother Bob's former pastor did make the men all stand up and give a message. Hmm? It gave you a great appreciation for who does do the study and do it on a regular basis. Hmm? We see the presentation. We see the product. Hmm. Notice, if you will, the person. Who do we give thanks to? Hmm? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. How come we can thank the preacher, but we can't thank God? Hmm? Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of preachers that do want the praise. There are. They like the notoriety. But can I say, the Bible makes it clear that the Lord is worthy to be praised. Mm? He is the one that our adoration are alive with. Boy, you all ain't got over having to study and give a lesson. Huh? Some of you have lost the color in your face. Hmm? Huh? Don't make me mad. I'll make you do it next week. Huh? The Lord deserves to be thanked for all that He has done for you and I. He allows us to enjoy His beauties. He allows us to enjoy His benefits. He allows us to have breath in our lungs, health, uh, 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 be able to stand on our feet, to be able to uh, uh, provide for our families. I mean, He has blessed us with everything that we have. He is worthy to be praised and thanked for that. Notice, if you will, the principle for thanking Him. Why should we thank God? He said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Here it is, for His mercy endureth forever. Uh, the principle for our thanksgiving is He has been merciful to us. Mm -mm. He didn't give us what we deserved. Mm -mm. He stayed His wrath long enough for us to get under His grace. He deserves our thanks. Mm -mm. Uh, we all deserve to be in hell tonight. But if you've been washed in the blood of Jesus, you're not going to hell. So therefore... It is a thrill to be able to come and say, Thank you, Lord. Sure. Mm. And then notice, if you will, the period. His mercy endureth forever. That don't mean much to you. But if you get to thinking about, what if His mercy only endured for a week? Then you'd only have security for a week. Hmm? You do realize, Donald Trump, you've only been saved about a year and a half or so. You do realize you've failed the grace of God since you got saved, don't you? Aren't you glad His mercy endures forever? 
If not, he stayed his hand of mercy. You know what the opposite of that is? Judgment. Hmm? Hmm? So I got to thinking about all this. By the way, in this chapter, it has 26 verses, and in all 26 verses, it says, His mercy endureth forever. Hmm? He has to remind us 26 times in this chapter alone that He's merciful and that He'll never run out of mercy. Hmm? His mercy endureth forever. So I got to thinking about all that, and I just want to give you a little thought on why God deserves our praise. Why He deserves our praise. Why He deserves our thanksgiving. Why He deserves to be adored and put upon uh, the elevation of our, our, our perspective of what life is. He ought to be at the top of it all. He is worthy to be thanked, praised, exalted, lived for, uh, longed for, because He is a wonderful and great God. I find in these three verses just three simple truths as to why He deserves our praise. Can I say, first of all, He deserves our praise because He is sympathetic. He is sympathetic. Now, this may shock you. I believe our president loves America. But make no mistake, the president don't know what it's like to live in a mobile home. He's never lived where you've lived. He's never had to scrape for food like you've had to scrape for food. I mean, he's proved he loved, uh, loves America for all that he's put up with for the last four years. I mean, he's only a multi-billionaire. He didn't need the job, and he don't make any money from the job. He's proved that he loves America, but he hasn't proved he loves you. Can I say Jesus put on flesh like you? Jesus was tempted in all points like you, yet he was without sin. There is nothing you will ever go through that Jesus didn't go through. Do you realize he became like you so you could become like him? He proved he is sympathetic. He knows what you're going through, my dear friends. He was touched with the feeling of our infirmities, yet he was without sin. Hmm? Oh, what a Savior. He became sympathetic. Look again in verse number 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord... For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Can I say, his goodness is revealed because of his sympathy for us. Had he not become sympathetic, he would have never revealed his goodness because he wouldn't know exactly what you need. But he knows exactly what you need because he's sympathetic, because his goodness reveals it. Can I say, his goodness, first of all, reveals or has been revealed through His love for us. He loves you more than you know what love is. 1 John chapter number 4, verse number 19 says, We love Him because He first loved us. And that same chapter, verse 7 says, For God is love. Nobody can ever say that, they've never, that they're not loved. And I appreciate Brother Bob a few months ago bringing out, folks say, well, well, we're unlovable. God loved us. We've never been unlovable. He said he loved us uh, with an everlasting love. Uh, uh, that didn't begin the day that we got born again. Uh, he loved us from eternity past uh, to eternity future. Uh, I want to tell you those that are in hell tonight uh, who will be judged and sent to the lake of fire, uh, God even loves them while they're in hell. Uh, it grieves his heart uh, that they're going to be cast into the lake of fire but they're going there because they rejected his love for them his sympathy is revealed in the fact that he loves us can I say this his goodness and sympathy is revealed through life everlasting secured for us he really wouldn't be sympathetic if he only saved us for a day that's torture he only saved us for a little while. But he gave us everlasting life. He secured that for us when we accepted him as Lord and Savior. 
His goodness is revealed through his leniency toward us. How many of you know when you was younger, you deserved mom and daddy's judgment, but they became lenient a time or two with you? Now, we should have been harder on you. Hmm. There's something about the heart of a mama. She's just got so much love for a child. Oh, don't get me wrong. She'll get on them when she has to, but she'd rather not. And can I say there's so much love for God, He realizes we were made of dust. He realizes we have never seen Him with the naked eye. We've never heard His audible voice. We've never really touched His hand even though He's touched our lives. We really have never, uh, 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 really the world looks at us like we're crazy. We're, we're telling them we believe in somebody we've never seen, never heard, never touched, uh, but we know he's there. And God realizes that. And he realizes how weak this flesh is. He will, realizes how frail this is. He realizes that this big uh, 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 massive potato inside our skull that's called a brain, really, it, it, it's messed up. He understands that. Uh, and so a lot of times he stays his wrath and he's lenient with us because he understands us. He is sympathetic to you and I. And because he's sympathetic, we ought to give thanks. We ought to give thanks. Uh, I mean, who, who of us could impress God? But yet, you, you, you know when kids are little and they go to art class, <laughs> And they make something out of clay, and they put it in the kiln, and then they paint it, and they bring it home and say, look, I made this for you. And then you've got to ask them what it is. <laughs> and you, you still got it. It's a nice paperweight. Huh? You know, you bring it out every now and then to show them you still got it. But you're like, <laughs> ooh, not much of an artist. We got no Picasso here. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Come on, you know I'm telling you the truth. Huh? And if you look at him and say, oh, my little darling's talented, everybody else is like, no, your little darling's mixed up. Huh? Uh, you better get them in trade school because they're not an artist. Huh? Well, can you imagine the very best we have to offer God is like that? It's messed up. But he still looks at it and says, you've done good. And he still keeps it. Huh? He said, hey, it don't mean much to anybody else, but they've offered that to me, and that's good enough. And our thanks isn't much, but it means much to God. And because he showed us sympathy, we ought to show him adoration, knowing whatever we have to offer is not much, but he still esteems it highly. And I say, he deserves our praise because he's sympathetic. And I say, secondly, he deserves our praise because he is sacred. Look in verse number 2. It said, Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods. And if you've got the right kind of Bible, the second God is a lowercase g. If that is a, high, a, a capital G, you need to see me after church get a real Bible. It said, Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Now, you do understand there's God, and beside him there is none else. There are not other gods. Mm, can I say this is not even referring to idols. What this is really referring to is amongst anybody else that is a minister or a priest or anything that man would look at and deem as sacred or holy or religious, uh, or something that is righteous. Uh, they are filthy before Him. He is the God above all others. Uh, he is the sacred one. Uh, and He deserves our thanks. Uh, there is no one, as John the Baptist says, is worthy to even latch at His shoes. 
let alone be on the same playing field as God. And because he is sacred, he is above all others. He deserves our praise. Can I say he is holy? We let that word roll off of our tongue, but we don't even have a concept of what it is. It is much more than without sin. Can I say that he is so above our thinking that sin is obliterated when it comes into his presence? He is holy. He cannot even be tempted with evil. He is so far above our thinking and above our pay scale that we can't even comprehend who He is. He is just God. He's sacred. He's holy. He is honor worthy. did a funeral yesterday. For all intents and purposes, this man had a great testimony. He loved the Lord, lived a long time, was in the heating and air conditioning business for a long time. I heard person after person he did work for had nothing but kind words to say. If you can be in business a long time and people have nothing bad to say about you, you've got a good testimony. Uh, can I say he was, he was involved in young men's lives and coaching and all, and I heard a lot of people say a lot of nice things about him. I know the preacher, the preacher that preached the sermon. Uh, he had a lot of great things to say about what he did around the church and what he did for the church. Uh, 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 the preacher gave a good gospel message, uh, a good encouraging message. Uh, and after all that was done, the man had served in the Navy. Now listen, I have been at quite a few funerals where the honor guard comes. Most of the time, it's either been Marines or Army. This is the first time I've ever been there when the Navy's done it. They all do it a little different. But these men came in. And when they folded that flag to hand it to that widow lady. And they cranked into taps. It rang throughout that funeral home. There's almost something spiritual about that. It's saying that the one who has passed on is honor worthy because they serve their country. Can I say, there is no one more honor-worthy than our Savior. He left glory to come here, to go to a cross. Uh, uh, he came to have his beard plucked from his face. Uh, he gave his back to the smiters. Uh, uh, he was spit upon. He was cursed. Uh, he was mocked. Uh, uh, he, they planted his head with a crown of thorns. Uh, they made uh, fun of him and gave him a purple robe and a reed in his hand. Uh, and they uh, falsely humiliated him uh, and falsely worshipped him. Uh, uh, but can I say, uh, even that bitter uh, and broken reed in his hand did not crumble because uh, anything committed unto him uh, he takes well care of it uh, and my dear friends uh, he yielded himself to the cross uh, he was suspended between heaven and earth uh, he died and went to the, uh, the grave he went to the lowest parts of the earth to hell uh, he ascended and seated at the right hand of the father uh, there's no one deserving of honor like him uh, and he did it because he loved sinners. He even said, for a good man, some would dare to die. He didn't die for good men. He died for the off-scour of the world. He died for sinners. He is holy. He is honor-worthy. He is sacred. I'll never forget, some of you remember, we went to Brother Wheeler's a few years ago, outside camp meeting. Out there at the tent has special service for them. And we toured Washington, D.C., and I don't know if all of you were there, but when we was at the World War II veteran, uh, Memorial, and there was a lot of World War II veterans still there that came out, some of them in wheelchairs, Brother Clint. I mean, men from the greatest generation. And they're there at the World War II Memorial that was built in honor of what they did to secure freedom for the world. And in the midst of that, a Marine stepped out and started playing taps. It was almost as if the Lord walked in. I mean, you could just feel the hair raise up on, on, and see those old men in, still in uniform stand up out of their wheelchairs and salute. 
saluting the very flag that a lot of this crowd today is burning and, and, and spitting on and wiping their feet on. Uh, they died uh, and they lived and fought uh, that you and I might have the freedoms we have today. They're certainly honor worthy, but nothing compared to what Jesus did. Oh, my dear friends, he's honor worthy. He's sacred. He's holy. And I say he is to be heralded. His name is above every name. It ought to be shouted from the mountaintops. Jesus. 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 You know, I, there are some places you have to go and wear a mask. So I figure if I had to wear one, I'd make people mad. I got a Trump one. I did. And really, I get a lot more like the mask than I get weird looks. What well, just dawned on me while I was preaching... I need to get another one that just says Jesus. If I'm going to make them mad, I'm going to make them real good and mad. I'm going to get one that says Jesus is the only, one, the only way to heaven. Huh? I think that upsets some people. I think I'll find a way I can get one of them made. Huh? Just, just, uh, yeah, I'll get you one, Phil. Huh? Nothing told you when we was in South Carolina, some lady, you know, come up to Phil. He didn't have one on. Said, the audacity of some people not wearing masks, huh? He said, hey, lady, go tell somebody cares. Went back to picking out some penny candy or whatever he was doing, huh? <laughs> Phil don't care. He'd get you hurt. <sighs> but he's my kind. I like him. Listen, Jesus should be heralded. Now, I don't believe that you have to wear a neon bright sign, you know, that glows in the dark, you know, Jesus is my Savior. But if you want to, that will be all right. I believe your countenance ought to show Jesus. I believe your speech ought to show Jesus. I believe your walk ought to show Jesus. Uh, I believe every part of your life, people ought to know that you're different. But it's okay to hmm, throw a little stab in the back by just saying his name every now and then. You know, hell cringes every time his name is spoken. But heaven rejoices over every time his name is spoken. Uh, I told you years ago, I know people get mad at me, but I don't really care. Uh, what's wrong with all this contemporary Christian music? They say God a lot. You know what they don't say? Jesus. If you can't find Jesus in your song, you need to find a better song. If your song's all about the beat and it's not about the Savior, you need to find yourself a better song. Huh? I don't know where it came from. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Just thought I'd make you mad, huh? Hey, he's, he deserves our praise because he's sympathetic, because he's sacred. But let me say this lastly. He deserves our praise because he's supreme. Look what it says in verse number 3. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Again, Lord is capitalized, of lords is not capitalized. Again, beside him there is none else. You do realize that he is Lord. He's almighty. God is self-sufficient. He doesn't need anyone or anything. Hmm? God took nothing and made everything. You understand that. He is almighty. He has all power. Hmm? Mm, can I say, even Satan trembles in his presence. Satan is utterly powerless in the presence of God. If Satan had power, he would have kicked Jesus off the throne. But who got kicked out of heaven in eternity past? Mm? He's almighty. Can I say this? I'm talking about he's supreme. He's almighty. Can I say this? He's all-sufficient. He's all-knowing. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. He's God. He's supreme. He's uh, supreme. Can I say that when Moses asked him his name, he says, Am. He said, I am that I am. What's your name? Am. I am that I am. He didn't say I was. He didn't say I will be. He said, I am. Can I say God's always been in the present? He's always the I am. Hmm? Can I help you with something? He's the I am. 
He is your hope of salvation. I am. Hmm? He is the helper for your stress. He is the uh, I am that will hold you through your storms. He's the I am. No matter what you face, no matter what you need, the answer is I am. He's the am. He's supreme. He's the final authority. You know, the devil can only drive you to your knees, and then when you call on the I am, business picks up. Hmm? Uh, he's supreme. There is none else. He's the I am. Alpha, Omega, beginning, the end, everything in between. That's him. He's it. You can do no better. And he deserves our praise. Throughout this chapter, we're reminded, you read the whole chapter, you find where he subdued kingdoms, where he overthrew tyrants, where he uh, overthrown the elements, where he just overcome everything Israel ever faced. And yet, most of the time, they're guilty of not praising him for who he is. This psalm was given to remind them that his mercy endureth forever. Now, dear child of God, have you truly given him the thanks that he rightly deserves from your life? So I come to church. So, can I help you with something? Probably 50 million people went to church today in America. That didn't mean they worshiped God. That only mean they knew God. So, well, preacher, you know, God knows what I think about him. I'm going to tell you something. I wouldn't be married 31 and a half years if I didn't remind her on a regular basis that I love her. And if she didn't remind me that she loved me. Now, other than Bob and Sonny, because, you know, they never have a cross word. But I'm sure, Joshua, there are times you get on Miss Tina's nerves, and I'm sure there's times she gets on your nerves. Yeah. But you still love her. Absolutely. You have to tell her you love her. And I'm going to tell her what you said when soon <laughs> service is over. I'll tell her. <laughs> hmm? Don't mean you're always in agreement. Don't mean you're always fellowshipping. Doesn't mean you're always kind to one another. I'm sure there's times you just wake up in a bad mood and you don't even like yourself, so you get on her nerves. I know she never gets on your nerves. You're in church, brother. Amen. You're the one that asked her to marry you. You signed up for it, Doc. Hmm? Huh? But yet, you still remind one another of your love one for another. The cop out of saying, well, God knows how I feel about him. Yeah, but he still wants to hear you admit it Amen. and tell him, Amen. thank you. Thank you. Some of you need to get out them little ceramic things out of the kiln you gave him, dust them off and offer them back to him. I know it's not much, God, but I sure do want to know how much I think of you. It would be all right to do that tonight. Some of you need to tell him you love him. You haven't treated him like it maybe this week, so you need to tell him. Some of you, all your prayer life this week has been consumed about you, so you need to come and make it about him. Hmm? And I'm a firm believer. The more your prayer life's about him, the more you need to, uh, the, the less you need to really ask him for anything about you. Amen. You'll find the more that you make it big about him, the more he takes care of all your little mess. Hmm? Some of you just get so caught up with everything that's going on in this world that you forget to look up and be thankful that you are faring much better than you deserve. So I wonder tonight. He deserves your thanks and your praise. When was the last time he really got it? Tonight would be a good night. Let's all stand. Let's have a word of prayer. Brother Clint, just come pick something out of your guitar there. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we do a bad job telling you thank you enough. We don't express our praise, 
our adoration, our love like we should. And we certainly don't worship you in spirit and in truth like we should. Lord, you are so more deserving than the way we treat you. But Lord, we do love you. And thank you, Lord, that your mercy does endure forever. Help us, Lord, to quit taking advantage of your grace and taking time to bless you for your grace and your mercy. Help us to show others how much we appreciate you in our life and in our walk. Now, Father, bless this time of reflection and invitation. God, speak to hearts. Lord, there may be somebody here tonight that doesn't thank you because they don't know you. This would be a good night for them to get born again. God, I pray for anybody like that. God, save them tonight. God, maybe somebody's been in a far country and they're just now starting to realize how good you've been to them. Maybe they need to come themselves. Lord, come back to the Father's house. Father, just have your way in this invitation now. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.